Welcome to the Top Order Podcast. It's just me and Stu this evening as we wrap up the semi-finals in this ICT T20 Men's World Cup of 2024. Perhaps two of the most one-sided semi-finals we'll ever see in an ICC world event. We'll talk about England's demise to India and we'll also talk about South Africa's shellacking of Afghanistan. All coming up on the Top Order Podcast. Stay tuned. Stu, just me and you, I guess, wrapping up these um, semi-finals and, and probably giving a little bit of a look ahead to the final, which gets played on uh, Sunday in Bridgetown, Barbados. So I think uh, 2.30 a.m. Um, kickoff time, I think. So, yeah, the, the more unsociable uh, for, for New Zealand TV audiences. And look, I'm sure we might mention TV, audience, TV audiences at some point during the course of the, the podcast. We do want to look back at these yeah, semi-finals. I, I think um, you and Raj covered, I think, the final games of that Super 8 uh, stage to get uh, to get us to here. It, we've typically looked most recent first, haven't we? So the second uh, semi, yeah, semi-final. Uh, obviously, look, I'm still processing elements of this as, a, as an Englishman. But w- what's your take on, um, on the game in Providence um, a little earlier today? Well, look, I mean, you you said it. They look, we can't gloss over the fact that these were two games that, uh, you know, were over fairly early on, I suppose, in, in terms of a contest. Uh, you know, England. I mean, the fact that India batted first at least made that more of a contest than the Afghanistan South Africa game in terms of how they played out. But I think for India, look, it, it all starts with Rohit again, and he really set the tone, and everything else just sort of followed from him. In the much much like the last Super Eight game that we talked about. You know, second ball, he's down the wicket to Reese Topley. The ball, you know, flies past third man for four, but it's it's that intent that he's sort of played with the whole time. And, you know, I, I, look, if we want to, you know, look on the other side, it could have been very different. Phil Salt dropped him in the second over from from Jofra. You know, probably it seemed like he lost it maybe yeah. coming, coming to him. But, you know, it could have been... Uh, could have taken that, and then you have Coley, you know, hits that lovely six, and he's out a couple of balls later. Punt out early, the rain break at eight overs. But really, once, you know, once Sky joined Rohit, the, I think the two of them, I think I've talked I talked about it in the last episode about what Afghanistan have done well. Really, India did this super well in this game, is that they, the two of them, when they got together, they summed up the conditions. And I, I think in a way, as much as Rohit showed that intent early on, they paced themselves and they went, look, okay, this is a good, you know, 160, 170 is a good score here. And, uh, you know, we're just going to make sure we get that and set up the rest of our guys. Because once that that India lineup, we've, again, we've talked about it a lot, they bat low down and the guys like Hardik and Dubey and even Akshar and, and Jadeja, if you give them a platform to to erupt in, they can just come out and play with such freedom. And yeah, Sky and Rohit really did that for India today. Yeah, look, I, I think that, you know the overwhelming thing I want to get across because look, I'm sure we will talk a little bit about the the scheduling and, and whatnot probably at the end of the end of the pod after we've looked at the second, um, yeah, the second semi final. The the thing I definitely want all of our uh, viewers and, and listeners to take away from from my perspective is. You know, India have absolutely outplayed England in all facets of this game. I think from a planning perspective that, you know, they've planned better. They've got their um, their tactics right. I think Rohit said at the toss, I think he would have batted first. I think, you know, that was England's first error is that they've been obsessed almost with, with chasing. I, you know, I don't think they've necessarily done enough of the... Uh, the homework. I think there's probably a little bit of perhaps overconfidence that they can chase down any score with the batting firepower that they've got. Look, I think that led to not necessarily a slow start with the ball, but I think they probably didn't understand the plans that they needed to go to quickly enough in in that um, in that game. The pace on deliveries were the one that's or the ones that seemed to yeah offer the batsman the most opportunity. Uh, so I think we were a little bit late to the party in figuring that out. I think the rain break as well, if, if I'm being brutally honest, that rain break at eight overs came at a really good time for England, not not for India. So yeah, I don't think you can even level that, you know, that rain break, uh, yeah, sort of uh, helped India. It certainly helped England, I thought, in that context. And then at the end of the game, you know, Joss Butler has come out and said, I oh, probably should have bowled a bit of, uh, yeah, a bit of mowing alley rather than potentially going with the yeah going with the seamers. So you know, there's an argument there that they they also made a selection error. 
they've had Tom Hartley with the squad all the way through. Um, if he wasn't going to, you know, if he wasn't going to play, then fair enough. But this was probably the game that, you know, they should have should have um, thrown him into the mix, pro- probably for, a, uh, yeah, probably for a Sam Curran in, in hindsight. But again, look, completely, completely and utterly outplayed throughout the course of this game. You know, we've spoken a lot about the quality of Axar Patel. Um, I don't know whether he was man of the match. I'm sure, sure he probably, he yeah, he probably was. Um, I turned it off by then to, um, yeah, to concentrate on probably the second biggest showdown of the day, which was the U.S. presidential debate, uh, which was uh, which which was equally as ludicrous in in some ways. But yeah, look, he bowled really, really well, and he and, and he showed, you know, showed probably what uh, what the game plan should have been from England, um, and, and probably the tricks that that they missed. Lip, I, I think going into yeah, going into the the final, do you think England, uh, India are just you know, yeah, can't really say peaking at the the right time because they've kind of been um, yeah been unbeaten through the course of this tournament so far. One game rained out, I think, um, in their yeah in their group stages. But yeah, you you mentioned Rohit hitting form. Uh, probably Virat's the only one who's really not got going. But you wouldn't yeah. bet against bet against that in the final. And yeah, that middle middle order today really worked, didn't it? With Sky and and Hardik and a, a little cameo from. Yeah, from Ravi Jadeja as well. Totally. I think, uh, I mean, I, I had the cameo from Hardik down as well. I mean, he had his struggles in the IPL, but he he has really showed his value in this tournament. I think, you know, right at the end of the IPL, we were kind of like, ah, maybe, there's a, maybe there's better kind of players. You just see his, yeah, you see his value, and he showed that fully, fully in this tournament. Again, when he's able to come in and, and play with that freedom, it makes such a difference, and 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 you know he's he's contributed with the ball as well. And I'm stoked that you mentioned Akshar because I have I have him written down here as the unsung hero of of India's whole tournament, really. And you know, I I actually I sort of wrote that down, and then I went, cool, I'll go and get some stats to back that up. And the stats actually aren't as impressive as I thought. I mean, he's taken eight wickets, um, his economy rate is under seven, so you know that's still very good. But I think what all of the little things that he does is is what makes him so valuable to this side. Even just having him in the team means that they can bat they bat lower down, that he's able to bowl in the power play, which I think is you know huge for and and really reliably as a spinner. You know we have seen lots of people bowl, lots of spinners bowl in the power play, but not all of them are. You know we, we've got Aiden Markram and and people like that that bowl in the power play, and sometimes those guys can get taken to. Akshar is very, very reliable in that case. You know, he took that stunning catch against in the Australia game. And yeah, I mean, he, he was fantastic today to, to come in and get Butler, who's, you know, was starting to really get on top of things there. It was, you know, a great start. And then, you know, pick up Bearstow. That, you know, quite an odd stumping of, of Moen Ali. I wanted to ask you, that's, that's fine then that Punt gets that before the crease is that because it hits it hits yeah it's because it's hit yeah it's because it's hit Ali so once it hits the hits the batter whether it's back glove pad whatever it doesn't really matter you can then um get the ball in front of the yeah in front of the stump so yeah no no problems with that at all well except for Mo and Ali wandering <laughs> aimlessly out of his crease obviously <laughs> yeah 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 so look I mean he's been fantastic and you know all the other guys that we that we've mentioned many times in this in this uh tournament you know Bumra you know, I, I cleans up salt with such a clever ball to get him. And I actually, you know, Raj and I talked in the previous show about how how are they going to use Boomer in this? And I, and I think Rohit, we probably, you know, we praised his batting before. We have to praise his captaincy as well. I thought that he bowled that power play. He managed that power play just about perfectly in terms of how you wanted to try and get it. He knew that it was key to take early wickets. And he did that, and he bowled Boomer two there, picks up Salt in that fifth over, a fantastic stuff. And then as soon as the pressure came on, kept Akshar going, brings on Cool Deep, and like people just can't pick Cool Deep. I mean, the yeah, I, I can't say enough about his variations, and and you know, we, again, we've talked a lot about how his S and stuff has changed, but yeah, he's just like we talk about mystery bowlers all the time. He is. It, it seems that he is genuinely a mystery to a lot of people who are facing him. So. Yeah, they they really are just the total package at the moment, and it seems like everyone is performing at the right time. Yeah, look, absolutely. And and in terms, I guess, of you know, we'll, we'll probably um, come on to yeah, come on to to finals and predictions and things like that in a set. But any any negatives for this Indian side? Anything that you think they're, they're worried about after their performance in this game? 
I don't think they're worried about anything. You know, I, I guess it seems to me that every time I look at the, the comments on our YouTube videos that the Indian fans are, are just generally going to be worried until... Until, <laughs> until they, they win. Until yeah. they win because of, uh, you know, recent forms in, in ICC tournaments, you know, having played so well in, in so many and, and getting to finals and, and not getting over the line. So I, I don't know how much of that plays on the players' minds. You, you sort of never know. I, I, I mean, part of me feels like players just don't even think of that in, stuff anymore. They're in so many different games. But and, and in a way, I think being away from India this time around will help. That, you know, being in, being in you know, a place where... Uh, you know, cricket maybe isn't the the be all and end all is is you know could could be helpful. But yeah, look, you know, I'm sure Virat wants to get some runs, but apart from that, everyone is sort of ticking all the boxes. And I imagine, I, I imagine that they'll go into that game thinking, control the controllables, like you you always say, do the you know do what we do well, and yeah, things things should go pretty well for us. On on the England side, before we kind of move on to the next semi-final. Do, do you think this is, I mean, we often talk about when we get to the end of a, a World Cup cycle, it sort of sees a few players depart. Do you think any any England players, we might have seen them in their last last run in an England shirt? Yeah, so look, I definitely think this is, pro- well, I definitely think probably, probably isn't a great answer to that <laughs> question. I, I think Moen Ali is probably one that you know we're, we're unlikely to see again. I think he's been a fixture of the, the white ball sides. I think he'll probably step away now. Uh, and look, I think particularly he's, he's not really bowled a massive amount for England in the last 12 months or so. Um, you know, a surprise really today and um, again, I don't want to harp on about it, but when you've got a scenario where, you know, Livingston bowls his four overs, Rashid bowls his four overs, and you split five between Jordan and, and Sam Curran um, and Reese, uh, and then Reese Topley bowling three, you've got to say that they've got the, the balance of that bowling side wrong um, to have three seamers, none of whom bowl out. So, yeah, strange that he didn't get on, but I think he, he probably is unlikely to feature. I'm going to say something a bit sensational here. I, I think that this could be the last that we see a Johnny Bairstow in an England shirt of any description. Um, and look, th- this is not to write him off. He, you know, he's played a massive amount of cricket for England across all formats. He's been around a very, very long time. Um, but look, I certainly think with the emergence of Harry Brook um, and probably some of the guys that are going around a little bit in franchise cricket and, and even some of the guys that are in this squad, the likes of Will Jacks, I think we might see... The England selectors take a yeah take a view on who the next cabs off are the rank uh, uh, cabs off the rank are from a from a batting perspective, and then probably the the other one for me age not an, an issue but yeah Sam Curran has been pretty um, ineffective in this um, in this World Cup I, I don't think he quite knows what his role is and I don't quite think that that's been set for him um, would be would be my view and then the, the other one. Um, who I really hope can carry on playing is is, is Adil Rashid. He's you know thirty six years old, um, so you know you, so you'd say he's got the ability playing really just one format now. Um, if he can um, can stay fit, and um, we've seen obviously spinners, um, yeah, like a good wine get better with with age. So, yeah, I think he still uh, performed you know really really well in this tournament. Um, I would say he was at the top of the T20 white ball rankings for for for, uh, for bowlers. I think at the start of the tournament, he'll still be you know he'll still be up there after his performances um, here. Um, so those are the people that I've got you know some slight concerns around. And then the other question really is if Joss Butler carries on as as captain. And I th- yeah, look, I think um, ultimately it, it'll be a, I think a decision for the new coach because I, I don't see Matthew Mott being the person in that role. Yeah, by the time yeah, by the time probably the next uh, the next white ball cricket comes around for England. But yeah, that'd be my that'd be my take. Interesting. So yeah, when do you know when that test uh, side is named? Because it's not too far from that test tour, is it? Yeah. So the uh, the test. So you're talking about the England West Indies. Yeah. Yeah. Look, the the, the squad I would imagine will be out pretty would have been out pretty soon after the final of this World Cup. Yeah, I, I wouldn't have thought they would have wanted to. To detract too much from a media perspective, so yeah, I think we can expect to see that squad come out pretty soon now. Um, and yeah, the, the match isn't that far away; a couple of weeks away, I think. Um, in, yeah, yeah early, uh, early to mid July at Lords. Um, obviously, penciled in to be Jimmy Anderson's final test if he's um, if he's fit and firing. Um, but yeah, I'm sure we'll come on and, and cover that at a later later stage. Let let's move on to to Ruba um, for the first semi final, Afghanistan. 
pulling off obviously some heroics in that rain affected game against Bangladesh, which you guys covered in the um, the wrap up leading into the, the semi finals. So a late night uh, for them, an early start the next morning for a flight, and then you know pretty much having to back up after. The, the inevitable adrenaline that must have been cursing through their their, their veins over the course of um, yeah the, the period of time after that that um, really really brilliant win against Bangladesh. So you've got to say tough for them to rock up and then um, and then play the most important game in their cricketing history so far. Yeah, it didn't. Yeah, it didn't go well. Is is probably the uh, the easiest way to describe that from an Afghanistan perspective. Yeah, I, I mean, yeah. I also had in my notes here, Afghanistan bat first, and it didn't go well. So yes, I, I can I concur there. Yeah, look, I mean, we you saw the way that they celebrated uh, making the semi-finals. You know, Gerbats was was up on people's shoulders. Gulbadin was was up there as well. Obviously, he couldn't walk because of his leg. But you know, yeah, it was different. He for got him. a very bad cramp. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, so different for him. I understand that. But you know, like they were. Uh, they were clearly wrapped to to make the semi-finals a huge moment. I mean, we've we've given them again a lot of praise throughout this tournament. They've been excellent. They've really brought something to the tournament. Obviously, knocking New Zealand out was was not so good for for me and and other New Zealand fans. But yeah, they've they've been very good and and very disciplined. And um, you know, I, I think we should give we we can give their players a lot of credit. I think we can give Jonathan Trott and their coaching staff a lot of credit for for the way they went about things. But yeah, I mean, I, I don't know that we need to break down the actual game in too much detail because of the way that it went. There's probably a few talking points. I might ask you in a minute about the pitch and, and whether this pitch was even uh, good enough, really, to be playing a semi final on. But I, I, the the thing I will do is I, I should just give a shout out to Marco Janssen. I, I I have been saying all the tournament that he's just not really my cup of tea opening the bowling. I still sort of. Uh, you know, for some reason, I just feel like I don't have confidence that he's going to be tight and economical and swing the ball and do the things. But in this tournament, that's exactly what he has been doing. Picked up really key wickets early on in this game. And, you know, he actually has one of the highest dot ball percentages in the whole tournament, if not the the highest. So he's been really fantastic. And if he's doing his job up front, the likes of Rabada, Nokia, Shamsi, Maharaj, that again, much like India, it, they have a, a total bowling attack that can suit that suits all the different conditions, and you throw Bartman in the mix as well. And for India, you throw Siraj in the mix. Both of these two sides that that are going into this final, they really have bowling attacks that that are pretty much perfect for for any sort of surface. And I mean, if they they this surface they certainly made use of. But Binksy, I mean, is that okay? Really, that we're seeing a, a semi final on a pitch that had that much variable bounce and, you know, just I, I don't think was up to scratch. Look, absolutely not. And I think, you know, there'll be, the, you know, the old cliches that get trotted out around both teams have got a bat on it. Um, it certainly didn't. It didn't get any worse throughout the course of the game. Um, so, you know, there was no difference between the first and second innings. But I think when we're talking about a T20 game, um, it, you know, there needs to be some consistency in the pitch um, for, for batsmen to feel a level of confidence. You don't mind a little bit of um, a little bit of assistance for the bowlers when it's lateral movement, um, you know, when it's either seam or swing. But when it's, yeah, seam, swing and going up and down, um, yeah, look, it, to be honest, it, it was, uh, and I don't know what the ICC uh, ranking categories are, but I, I would put this in the, um, poor to piss poor category uh, for, for, for for sure. And really just, look, I guess it takes away from the, what should have been a spectacle of a game. If we look at uh, spin and, and, and a bit better bounce, but, you know, it, it, wasn't, a, it wasn't a shocker. This pitch um, in that Afghanistan, um, South Africa game was, a, was an absolute, yeah, absolute shocker. And I think probably the other point I'll just make is that, um, South Africa have counted that really, really well. You can't take away from the fact that they've exploited the conditions brilliantly. Um, and then obviously, they, you know, I wouldn't say they had a wobble, but um, they went out relatively circumspect in their chase because, um, you know, they probably thought if we lose three or four quick wickets, it could get a bit squeaky, mm -hmm. um, particularly given their history in, in important matches and semifinals. I think, uh, yeah, I, I think that that, that aside... Um, 
yeah, this just really wasn't good enough. But they have also played on probably the worst collection of pitches in the tournament as well. So I don't, I don't necessarily say you can be used to bad pitches, but they played on that pitch in New York, didn't they? Um, I think three games in a row at the start of the tournament. They played all of, the, all of their first three at, at New York, which was a little bit up and down and, and sort of tennis, yeah, tennis, yeah, tennis ball bounce. Um, but yeah. Definitely, I think if we reflect on this tournament, and I'm sure we will at the end of it, um, the pitches will be a little bit of a talking point. Um, you know, not many games have fallen into the Raj Ready sweet spot from a run scored perspective, and the pitches have been a big part of that. I like a little bit of um, variance. I don't think they should all be um, rolled bits of concrete um, that just, you know, see us get six after six after six at over 60 meter boundaries. Um, but yes, this was not good enough for um, a showpiece game. Definitely not. I mean, you know, even there was those ones that were skidding along the ground pr- pretty much. Veen bowled that ball to Quinton de Kock that was borderline dangerous, came forward, you know, wrapped, yeah. him, on the, wrapped him on the arms. You know, yeah. Yeah, and I, I think the thing that highlights it for me is I actually watched the whole of the um, the whole of the Afghanistan in- innings whilst I was going out to get a sandwich. I'd picked up my little buzzer in the food court for when my sandwich was ready. And um, by the time they'd, you know, buttered my bread and delivered it to me, the, the Afghanistan innings was was uh, was almost over. So, yeah, it was absolutely, yeah, absolutely scandalous. On, on, I mean, on, on that, I guess, what, what does South Africa take out of a game like this then going into, a, you know, a big final? They've They've had a... Uh, they've had a weird sort of tournament. I mean, you mentioned it before. They've played on a lot of pitches that haven't been especially conducive for batting. There's been a lot of low scores. They've been, I think they made it all the way through their group stage, hadn't scored over 120, but came through unbeaten, you know, went through, they're still unbeaten, obviously, went through the, the Super 8 phase. Pit, you know, I think actually to give uh, the Caribbean a bit more credit, that Super 8s, the pitches were, were much, much better in terms yeah. of, um, you know, how how the the group stage went? Yeah, what what does say that South Africa actually kind of get from a game like this where they're so dominant? Does that does that build the confidence? And do they think now we're in, or are they like this is just kind of a nothing game? Yeah, look, I I think um, what they would have liked to have think of taken out of it, and I think the major thing they've probably taken out of it is. Um, India, and maybe this is the segue into this conversation, India have by by far had, I think, one of the nicer schedules throughout the course of this World Cup. Um, you know, obviously knew where they were going to be playing their semi-final, um, you know, know the logistics around where, how they were going to get to the um, the ground after their final Super 8s game. And then they, you know, ultimately probably got their tickets booked for the final um, the final as well. So I think what South Africa would have taken out of this first and foremost is no injuries um, picked up in the game. Um, and then hopefully that they were going to be able to get to Barbados, you know, quickly and, and and without too much fatigue from that semi-final. As it turns out, I think they've had some, uh, yeah, some logistical errors. Their flight was delayed and they're, you know, six or seven hours late getting into, um, yeah, getting into their destination. Um, and with this, you know, ridiculously tight schedules and I don't know why why could they not have had you know a couple of extra days in between the semis and the finals or certainly probably crunch that group stage to have games played on the same days look I I don't know all the logistical and commercial answers to that question um but that yeah I think that's what they would be hoping to take out of it um was was a bit of rest and and recuperation hopefully they've still got that um you know hopefully they're in a nice airport lounge with a with a gin and tonic and some free pretzels (laughs) Uh, and and then, yeah, as you say, from a cricketing perspective, though, Stu, I don't think they'd have taken a massive amount from it. They were clinical with the ball. They got the job done with the bat. Uh, and probably also, I just think emotionally, um, if they'd have had, a, you know, another close game and that they've had a number of close games in this tournament, does, does that then set you up better for potentially a close final? Or, or do you want an easy workout, both physically, uh, physically and mentally? And look, I guess we'll know the answer to that Monday morning, won't we? Totally. And and look, that final, it really does have some good storylines. We've got two unbeaten teams. There's a chance Rahul Dravid can finish on a high. India's obviously got yep. that chance to to put the 2023 ODI World Cup firmly in the past. And that's something that a lot of key people, as I said before, keep mentioning to us in the, in the comments. South Africa's got the first, you know, it's the first final. And Binksy, actually, this is, did you know that this is the first time since we started the Top Order podcast that there is not 
New Zealand, England, or Australia in an ICC men's final. It's uh, it's it's very very sad for us. Well, look, uh, uh, Statscorer on Crick Info didn't actually um, pull that up for me. Not not impossible, but pretty close to it. I think the the twelfth <laughs> man said. Fascinating, really. I think you know India must go in as a strong strong favorites you know they've lifted silverware they are in you know fantastic form the the only thing you could probably level against them is they um they haven't had too many real close games but i think you know all of their guys have had plenty of close encounters in high pressure franchise cricket in very very recent times obviously with the ipl but yeah i wouldn't have thought that's going to be a major you know major issue and for south africa i guess it's just whether or not they breathe a sigh of relief that they're in the final and and can kind of take that pressure off themselves or whether you know the 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 undoubted rhetoric in the media and that you know they've got to stay off twitter and instagram and and on all those kind of things the next couple of days haven't they and and avoid that getting into their head if they if they possibly can. Yeah, totally. You know, I, th- I think back to, you know, New Zealand, when we made the the ICC uh, ODI World Cup final in 2015, and uh, it was against South Africa. It was such an emotional moment to, to have made that final, to get over that final hurdle. And obviously the, the final didn't go especially well for, for New Zealand. A lot of people say, you know, it was over in the first over when Brendan McCullum got out. I don't yeah. personally agree to that, but you know, I, I think that again, South Africa will have to will have to sort of get past that and think, like, really make it clear that getting to that final was not the the key. You know, we're here to win this tournament. Yeah, uh, I would really like, I would really like them to actually bat first. You know, you talked about it just before with with England and the way that they, you know, they want to chase all the time. I would love to see South Africa bat first and put the pressure on because I actually think. You're just not going to, well, I mean, maybe they'll prove me wrong, but I just don't feel like you chase a score against this Indian side because of the way that their bowling lineup is set up. If they get a pass score on the board, just Jasper, you know, you've, you've sort of always, every chase we've seen with any side playing against India, they always look like, okay, maybe they're in the hunt here. And then Boomer, boom, then you go, oh, boomer has got two overs and, uh, you know, they'll get about six off those two overs and, and that'll be it. So you kind of have to, I really think that they have to be smart about trying to put the pressure on India because in the same way, India, you know, as much as these guys have been in big games, they will know, and Rohit and uh, Kohli especially, those kind of guys, it feels like they've played this T20 World Cup. They've tried to get themselves in the squad because they want to lift the silverware, and it's really important to them to, to be there when India do try and you know break this run of of tournaments where they've played a long way and in, deep into the tournament and not quite got over the line so yeah I, I think that the the way for South Africa to try and get you know get the best out of their performance it would be to bat first put you know it's in Bridgetown it's a game where we've seen one of the, one of the they've been one of the better wickets during the tournament India was India scored 180 there against Afghanistan Australia scored 200 against England the last couple of games have been the USA have been involved, and and you know that I think they've taken that that's where they've taken a hammering a little bit in those last couple of games. So it's a wicket where runs have been more freely available, and I think if South Africa go in and, and actually put a total on the board, suddenly it becomes. It, I mean, it could be a super super exciting fixture. Yeah, I mean, I guess from like I said, we're it's the first one that we're going to be going to that from a new where all of us are neutral, and none of us are going to be celebrating our team lifting a trophy at the end of the tournament. So yeah, that's that that'll be my hope that we just get a cracking game and another really close finish that we've seen from this tournament. Uh, and Stu, any particular matchups or little battles that you're looking forward to seeing or you know if you want to frame that in what you know where will this game be be won or lost do you think? Well, I, I think the power play is really important for both sides. I, and you know I said that in um in our last episode as well around the England lineup because of the way their openers go. I mean, South Africa obviously Reza, Reza Hendricks has not had the best tournaments. He'll be really pleased. I imagine that might that might be the number one thing that came out of that game for South yeah. Africa that that he actually they just could, got to bat for a little while. They could pick him, yeah. 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 And so, you know, but the, I gave a, before I gave Rohit some credit for the way he managed the power play. I think it's very, very important because you get into the South African batting lineup early 
and you can cause them a bit of you've, we've seen their top order wobble we've seen their middle order have to kind of scramble to get them up to a total whereas if if that South African lineup of Miller and Stubbs and Klaassen, if they can come in with a bit of a platform, we've seen through the IPL and through you know loads and loads of tournaments over time, and even thinking back to that to, uh, ODI World Cup, if those guys come in and it's you know it's time to go hit the go button, then they can do all sorts of damage no matter who is bowling. So I think for them it's really important. And on the other side. I would love to see Mark. I hope Markram doesn't muck around with his bowling lineup in that power play. He has to bowl Janssen, try and get some swing, try and get an early wicket, and then bring Rabada on. It's, there's no time to, to bowl himself. I'd be very disappointed if he starts to try and burgle and over in there to, to you know pick up someone. I, I think he has to actually go. We've got to get Rohit early. We've got to start getting into. We've got to get this lineup in a little bit of trouble and make sure that they can't come in with the freedom to just go and go and go because, yeah, India, it, it'll be all over for India if they can post a score on the board that means that those guys can come in and just go nuts in the, at the back end of the innings. Yeah, awesome. Time for predictions, Stu. What, what do you think? It's hard to go past India, isn't it? I mean, look, I, I, I do think this one will be really close. Again, I, I really think this is a – these two sides – uh, Raj said it last time that he thought that they were the best four sides in the tournament that had made it through into the semifinals. I think quite clearly the best two teams have made it into the final. You, you know, the fact that they've been unbeaten probably says it all. But, yeah. you know, they, they've, they really have, you know, South Africa has had to work really hard in, in terms of getting across the line in, in close games. But I think you give them a huge amount of credit for that in the way that they've done that based on, you know, their history in close games in the past. And I think for India, you said it as well, that they've, the way they've managed this tournament, they've had, had hardly any close games. You know, the, the Pakistan one is the one that stands out. But the, from, from that point on, they've been able to manage get games and manage situations so, so well. And yeah, it's, it's hard to go past them. But I do think that uh, I, I expect South Africa to put a really good showing on the board. And, and if they bat first, India is going to have to be pretty good to, uh, to get over the line. What about you, Binksy? Yeah, look, uh, yeah, I'm not going to split the yeah split the decision on the pod. I'm afraid uh, for South African fans, I, yeah, I, I can't really look past India for this. Um, I expect that Virat Kohli will score some runs. Only slight um, worries the wrong word, but the the only the only way I think I can see South Africa getting into the to the game um, is if they do really really win and blow that power play open, and they get you know Rohit Kohli. Um, um, or Sky, you know, a combination of maybe three, yeah, three wickets early on um, and put pressure on that middle order, put pressure on Hardik um, coming in at five or, or six. And then, um, yes, we know that Akshar and, and Ravi Jadeja, when they've got a platform, um, you know, and, and look, that that's not different to South Africa. When you give a platform to guys like that, um, they can go. But uh, yeah, I think the the way that South Africa win the game is if they can get a lot of overs at those guys. If they're bowling ten overs at Hardik and Akshar and Jadeja, that's where they might just yeah just be able to wrestle uh, wrestle an advantage. So that power play um, key, and then I, I think the other reason that India are just favourites, um, such probably strong favourites, they haven't got that monkey on their back of uh, of not you know not being able to win an event, um, a world event. I know that you know. That their fans would have wanted one a bit more recently, uh, but South Africa haven't had one since readmission into uh, into international cricket in 1990, 1992. And then the other factor is that they've just got every single base covered in terms of their permutations. If they want to get um, three or four spinners in, they can. We've seen how yeah how Akshar and Jadeja and Kuldeep have been absolutely quality. And then you know we've seen you know Bummer has just been sensational and and I think Arshdeep's probably gone a little bit uncredited with with uh, how well he's bowled at times throughout the course of the tournament as well so they've got every base covered so yeah stick your money on uh, stick your money on South Africa because we've both backed <laughs> India yeah. I had, I had South Africa uh, South Africa Australia final was uh, was my bet at the start of the tournament it hasn't 
hasn't yeah, quite well, panned look, out that way, but uh, yeah, yeah. Well, look, I had West Indies Australia, so you're, you're more right than yeah, more right than me, viewers and listeners. Yeah, listen to Stu if you uh, yeah want your hard earned a little bit safer. <laughs> well, look, I guess Stu, we will wrap up the pod here. We will be back, obviously, after the final um, to wrap up not only the final but probably the tournament as well, because um, I know we, we you know we definitely want to have a chat about the format. Because, look, whilst I think, you know, we talked after that group stage how, how good it was to see the associates, um, yeah, associates in, it's thrown up some kind of scheduling and, and some conversations probably around the ongoing quality of the surfaces throughout the course of the tournament, which I'm sure we want to dive um, dive into. And we'll probably also start to look a little bit ahead to uh, to the test summer in England as well at some point over the next couple of weeks. But we will be back in your feed, clearly, to either... Um, gain a lot more listeners in India um, if they win, um, or probably a, a poor performance in terms of our, uh, our podcast if it's a South African win on Sunday, <laughs> Sunday morning, New Zealand, New Zealand time. But that is it from us here in Auckland this Friday evening. Uh, Tariki, the Māori New Year here in New Zealand, so a public holiday for uh, for New Zealand, which I'm sure both you and I have enjoyed today, Stu. Um, but we will be back. Um, after that final um, to give you our thoughts and views on the T20 Men's Cricket World Cup final coming up Sunday, 2.30 New Zealand time in the morning. Set your alarms. But for now, it's good night and God bless from us here in Auckland. We'll see you soon.